Hi YouTube, uh, I'm Solon. Today I'm playing with LED lighting. Um, Doug from SV Seeker, he's, he's a guy from the States, he's currently building an origami hull boat, a nice big steel boat, and he's also doing a side project which is an underwater uh, towable UAV. So it's a, a little little submarine with cameras cameras, sonar and um, LED lighting that he's been having a bit of trouble with. So I, as I've played with LED lighting a bit I thought I could help him out a bit, um, show him what I've had good luck with in terms of cheap LED lighting off eBay. So these driver modules here, this is, this is, how, this is how they come uh, from eBay. Uh, they're advertised to 10 amp modules. Um, they go they go well above 30 volts um, for their maximum output voltage. They're, they're voltage adjustable by one of these uh, potentiometers, little 10 turn pots, uh, and current adjustable by the other other potentiometer. Um, so all I've I've got a couple of different versions here that um, one's essentially a clone of the other. Um, the, the one with the slightly larger board was actually a, a cheaper version that I got slightly later. Um, they're essentially clones of each other, they're almost identical. Um, the, one of the main differences is on the cheaper version, uh, instead of saying CC adjust for constant current adjust, it says RV2. So the labelling on the copy version is not quite as good. Um, the other thing that you have to be aware of is the potentiometers that uh, they're essentially put in back back the front. So you would you would expect that they would be put in so that you turn it uh, anti-clockwise to turn it down, but that's not the case. It's turning it anti-clockwise is turning it up and turning it clockwise is turning it down. So the first thing to do, well, I, I've just put some smaller uh, leads on just for testing purposes, just makes things easier to plug in and out uh, of each other because I've got the same uh, RC, JST connectors on all of them. Um, the wires are a bit thinner than they really should be, but for testing purposes, for a quick test on the bench, uh, these thin wires won't be a problem. So, um, to start with, the, the top potentiometer for voltage, uh, in order to drive uh, the LEDs we're using today, uh, you need about 30 volts. So I'm going to be powering this module off 12 volts today. I've got my bench power supply here set to 12 volts and 5 amps. So 5 amp, 5 amp current limit. So if I just if I just plug this module in and grab a multimeter, just put it on put it on volts. So you want to measure the output. Now that's a problem. I've actually turned it up above the rating of the capacity. They're only 50 volt rated capacitors, so turn it. So I would not recommend turning the voltage adjust potentiometer all the way all um, all the way counterclockwise because you're going to risk blowing up your capacitors. So I'll just set it to 35 volts and I will adjust the other potentiometer for current adjust I'll adjust that all the way clockwise to turn it all the way down. And 
sort of just plug it into one of these LED modules. So that's minimum brightness. Now I've got another piece of test equipment here. It's a little ammeter and watt meter. So I can just plug that in in series with the in series with the LED. It's just got a little current shunt and measures both the voltage and and the current. So there we are. I've got 27 volts across the LED the LED module and currently drawing almost 5 watts. So that's at the minimum setting on this potentiometer, which from a previous reading, um, well, the minimum setting here we're getting 0.18 amps drawn. So if I turn this counterclockwise to turn it up, we've got 15 watts, um, 20 watts. 25 and we're up at 4.5 amps on the bench supply so I don't really want to go much higher than that otherwise the power supply gets a bit unhappy so we're getting 46 watts through this LED module so this is this is one of the, the cheaper LED modules. Um, you get very mixed luck with uh, with what batch and which seller you happen to get these off. Um, I do have a seller that I've found to be one of the better sellers. So, um, Shaw Display. Uh, they're, um, they're just an eBay store for Shaw Electronics. Uh, they're They've got some neat audio modules as well. So I'll just change just change to a different different LED. So for this this particular LED module, um, it's got a slightly uh, I'll just uh, made the current drop down a bit so I'll just adjust it again so I've got 45 watts going through here 4.4 amps on the incoming side so 45 watts there if I just if I just measure um, how much power is going into the LED driver then we should be able to work out the efficiency so 51 watts going in 45 watts going out so that's pretty close to 90 percent efficient and from picking it up uh, it's mildly warm it's um so I, I think I think 50 watts um, at about 5 amps, half the rating is a is a good good sort of current to run these modules at. So the other thing that Doug wants is to be able to uh, dim the lights so that it doesn't wash out the cameras when he's got his ROV up closer to something. So he's already been playing with Arduinos. Um, here I've just got a smaller Arduino. Um, this one is a Nano. Um, so I've just got this programmed up with some very simple code that uh, will read an analog input uh, that I've got connected up to this potentiometer and turn it into a pulse width modulated uh, analog output. So we should be able to hook this in in series with the power to this LED driver and we should be able to actually control the brightness. So I'll just power this up. So 
So I've just I'm just running this off uh, three AA batteries, which gives 1.5 volts per battery, so four and a half volts there. So power in through the MOSFET, through the LED driver, and into the LED. And there we are. Now, when it gets to about halfway on the potentiometer, I'm hitting the current limit on my power supply. So if I go past that, then it will dim just because my uh, power supply isn't keeping up. And the noise you can hear, that's again my power supply not being particularly happy with the pulses that are being drawn from it. So I've got a capacitor here to try to make that a little bit better, but um, yeah, the power supply just doesn't particularly like pulses being drawn. Um, if you're using LiPos, then they shouldn't really mind. So with it turned right down, you can see all of the LED chips in an array. So it's a 10 by 10 array for these 100 watt uh, LED modules. So I'm not sure how this will work with the watt meter, but let's just check check how much um, is well how much ex extra is being dropped across this MOSFET. Uh, initially, I was using uh, an IRF 540, um, but it got far too hot, so I ended up going for IRFB3607 MOSFETs. So these are uh, 75 volt rated, 80 amp rated N channel MOSFETs. So I'm running it without a heatsink, which means you have to derate it quite a bit. Um, but it it's running without getting too hot to touch essentially so um, oh, no it does it does get too hot to touch so really this needs to be mounted onto a, a heatsink um, now just to check which uh, which pin is connected to the case. So it's the middle pin. If you're mounting these to a heatsink, they do need to have an insulation pad uh, to the heatsink. So if, if these were mounted to the hull of the ROV, then um, they, they would need a little tom uh, or mica or, or silicon pad uh, and a little little um, little spacer for each of them in order to in order to um, not have them short out when when you've got several several of these being driven so with with the LED turned up full I'll turn it, sorry turned up to four and a half amps there it's jumping around because uh, it's not a constant current anymore, it's drawing pulses, but it's jumping around 50. So, so I'd say there are, there's probably a, a couple of watts being lost, a um, couple of watts being lost in that MOSFET. Um, So it does hurt your efficiency a little bit. Uh, the way to fix that would be to find a MOSFET that uh, is um, logic level switchable. 
Uh, if you look in the data sheet for this MOSFET, then you find out that the recommended uh, drive voltage for switching it uh, is 10 volts. So we are driving it at significantly less than that. We're driving it at 5 volts, which means we're not going to be switching this uh, MOSFET hard, and it means you end up with losses within the MOSFET. So um, here's here's just a, a drawing of a of the MOSFET in the package, um, the gate, the drain, and the source pins. So the gate is used for controlling it. Um, this um, and from from the diagram, there's internally a diode uh, that is in the reverse direction to how you're actually trying to control, or in the reverse direction to what you can switch with the MOSFET. So it's a it's a simple way when you see see the drawing of working out um, how how the how the MOSFET um, should be arranged in the circuit in order to do the switching. Uh, the other um, the other part of this here is just a drawing of the basic hookup that I've got here. So I've got a 12 volt supply uh, supplying the power for the for the LED. I've got a separate 5 volt power supply just for running the Arduino. Uh, that could be powered off off a voltage regulator, so it could all be off the same power supply. Uh, but just for hooking something up quickly. I've just used um, just used um, a separate four and a half volt or five volt power supply. Uh, I've also put a um, approximately 20 ohm. It's actually a 18 ohm uh, resistor from the output of the Arduino into the MOSFET, uh, just to limit the amount of current because uh, the gate of the MOSFET is a capacitive load. And without a resistor, uh, you can potentially damage the output of the Arduino. Uh, the other thing to pay attention to is that not all of the outputs on the Arduino uh, are capable of pulse width modulation output. Uh,